Welcome to this video, which is on the preparation of an organic liquid. Uh, and really, actually, that's probably a poor title. Um, it should be, well, the focus is on not the preparation, but the purification of an organic liquid. And this experiment probably looked at in the lower sixth of your A-level course. And in this experiment, uh, certainly my students turned 2-methylpropantuol into 2-chloro-2-methylpropane. Uh, so here is our reactant. Uh, so there's uh, the methyl group on the prop backbone, and there is the alcohol. And we turn that into the halogenoalkane. Uh, so you have to excuse my sort of slightly wiggly writing that obviously should connect there. Um, and in order to do that, well, it's a substitution reaction. Um, we actually, in our experiment, used conch hydrochloric acid. So we put plus HCl in there. And the hydrogen went with the OH, which was removed. And water was released. Uh, so in actual fact, that's a nucleophilic substitution reaction. Uh, the chloride ions in here act as the nucleophile, which are attracted to the delta positive carbon. Uh, but the OCR syllabus uh, states that the halide ion um, comes from a mixture, rather than, rather than you just using conch HCl, um, it talks about using a halide salt in the presence of an acid. And the example that they gave was sodium bromide in the presence of conch H2SO4. And those two react together to produce hydrogen bromide. So rather than reacting sodium chloride with H2SO4, which would, it, would have made HCl, we can just use conch HCl. Uh, which we can get out of a stock bottle in the prep room. So that was the reaction that was carried out. And so what you're left with at the end of the reaction is your product, some water, and maybe some leftover hydrogen chloride, uh, which would be dissolved in the water. And our challenge really is to get a pure sample of this organic liquid. And that's what the emphasis of this video is on. How do we get a pure sample of that liquid? So I'm gonna talk you through the steps that we would do in the laboratory. Uh, and it will be helpful if you've downloaded the PDF file um, which goes alongside this video. Um, if not, you'll just have to work through on the next slide with me. So the most important piece of apparatus in the separation of this haloalkane from the reaction mixture is a separating funnel. So let's have a look at what a separating funnel looks like. Voila! Here's our separating funnel. So you can see here uh, that it's a funnel with a tap here and a very small hole here and an open end here which can be stoppered. And so this is excellent for putting liquids in, shaking them up, and then allowing them to separate. And most liquids, or sometimes a liquid, will separate into just a homogenous liquid. In other words, you can't see any, any difference in the liquid. It looks, it looks consistent throughout. But some mixtures might separate into distinct layers. And that's where the separating funnel comes in handy because what it allows us to do is then open the tap let's imagine we've got two layers in here layer one there layer two up here we could open the tap here and that allows the bottom layer to drain through and we can choose what we do at that point because we've then got two separate liquids we've got the top layer left in the separating funnel we've got the bottom layer left in a beaker and you might want to keep the bottom layer or you might want to keep the top there, but you can choose at that point. So a separating funnel is extremely useful when the liquids are immiscible. And our halogenoalkane is 
certainly not miscible with an aqueous layer. It does not willingly, or it's unable, to form hydrogen bonds. So the aqueous layer sticks together quite closely, and the haloalkane layer, therefore, sticks together quite closely and does not mix with the aqueous layer. So, our first step on the separation is to put the reaction mixture into the separating funnel. So you put it in and then you stop at the separating funnel and shake it. Now when you're doing that, you don't shake it for very long. You shake it for a moment, okay, and then you either take the stopper out or you turn it, the, the funnel with the stopper in upside down and release the tap. So I've just put here, remove stopper and allow mixture to settle. And the reason you need to take the stopper out very quickly is sometimes when you shake this, gas is released. And if you leave the stopper in, you're likely to cause a small explosion. Um, so you might want to shake it several times. okay? But then you allow the mixture to settle and you should then get your two distinct layers. And in our experiment, we want the upper layer because the upper layer is the haloalkane. The haloalkane is less dense than the aqueous layer. So what we will do is we'll allow the mixture to settle, then open the tap and drop by drop, allow the aqueous layer to drip through, and when the haloalkane layer gets the tap, we'll turn the tap off. Now, within that haloalkane layer, there may have been a little bit of acid residue left on the inside of the separating funnel or a tiny bit of HCl might have dissolved with the haloalkane that you've made. And it's important we get rid of that HCl. So what we then do is we add some sodium carbonate to our mixture. Now we might as well keep the mixture in the separating funnel. So we'll put, uh, we'd have our haloalkane in there and we'd add into it some sodium carbonate solution. And that is going to react like fury with any acid which is in here. Okay, Any acid which is in here is going to react like fury with the sodium carbonate solution and you're going to see very very vigorous bubbling of, or very very vigorous bubbling with carbon dioxide coming off. So when you're doing your shaking you'd only shake for a moment, take the stopper off and allow any carbon dioxide to escape. Shake it again, carbon dioxide to escape, shake it again. And you'd keep adding the sodium carbonate until you saw no more effervescence. So you know all of the HCl has reacted with the sodium carbonate. And you'll notice that the sodium carbonate is aqueous. So when you've decided that you've added enough sodium carbonate, you'll again have two layers which you can allow to settle. And again, the top layer is the haloalkane, and now the bottom layer, again, is aqueous, the aqueous layer. My writing is terrible today. So we'll drain out the aqueous layer and we're left with our haloalkane. Now, hopefully we've removed nearly all the water, but some again may have been stuck round the sides of the separating funnel. A tiny bit may have gone into the haloalkane layer. So at this point we'll probably get a conical flask and put the haloalkane in there. And we'll add what's called a drying agent. Now anhydrous magnesium sulphate or anhydrous sodium sulphate are pretty good drying agents. They're solids and when you add them into the a, well, a mixture you would like there to be no water in, the water binds very, very strongly to these solids and forms hydrated salts. And so what you can do, if you've only got a small amount of water in, in there, is these will absorb the water. You've then, unfortunately, got some solid hanging around at the bottom of your mixture. Here's my solid. So an easy way of getting rid of that solid is to filter, so that's what I've pointed out here, to filter it, and then in theory, you've got then your pure haloalkane. 
Now, unfortunately, that's not pure enough. There may be some other liquids knocking about in there, um, maybe a little bit of the original starting reagent. So what you then do is you get your Liebig condenser out and you distill that mixture, or you distill your supposed mixture. Okay, And you collect, you, you collect the distillate at the product's boiling point, so you look that up in data tables to see what you're expecting your product to boil at, and you collect the liquid probably one degree either side of the product's boiling point. And that should give you a pure sample of your organic liquid. Now, in an exam, you need to be able to talk about the steps. You need to be able to discuss what's going on in each step. And you need to justify why we choose the apparatus. You might even be required to draw the apparatus. But it's m probably more important that you actually know why certain pieces of apparatus are used. So a separating funnel is used because it allows us to see very easily two immiscible liquids, which form two distinct layers, and allows us to drain the lower layer out without the upper layer getting mixed in. We added sodium carbonate solution to react with any acidic impurities that were in there. We added anhydrous magnesium sulfate or sodium sulfate to absorb any moisture that was in the organic liquid. And then our final purification stage to ensure that we only get a pure organic liquid was to distill. I hope that video helps. Okay, please make a flowchart of your own. Annotate it with really scruffy diagrams if that helps. And please do learn this.